And one quotation which is very often used by the critics is of Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 5. And this was also used by Arun Shori, one of the staunchest critics of Islam in this country, India. His name is Arun Shuri. And he writes in his book, The World of Fatwa, and he gives the reference that Quran says in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse number 5, and it tells the Muslims that wherever you find a kafir, into brackets he's indicating Hindus. He's saying that the Quran says in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse number 5, that wherever you find the kafir, you have to kill them. And if you read the Quran, if you open the Quran, and if you read the translation, what he's saying is correct. Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 5 does say that wherever you find the kafir, you kill them. But it is quoted out of context. For context, you have to start from verse number 1 of Surah Tawbah, chapter 9. And when you read the context and know the background, why was this verse revealed? We come to know that there was a peace treaty between the Muslims and the Mushriks of Makkah. And this peace treaty was unilaterally broken by the Mushriks of Makkah. So when this peace treaty was unilaterally broken by the Mushriks of Makkah, Almighty God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He says in Surah Tawbah chapter 9 verse number 2, that He is giving four months time. Otherwise, there is a declaration of war. And it's mentioned in Surah Tawbah chapter 9 verse number 5, that after the four forbidden months, it is the Muslims, that you fight and you kill the pagans. That means your enemies, wherever you find them. And seize them and wait for them in every stratagem of war. So in context, we come to know this verse was revealed in the battlefield. That in the battlefield, when the peace treaty is broken and when the enemies come to fight you, don't get scared, fight back. And kill them where you find them. But natural, any army general in the battlefield to boost up the morale of the soldier, he will say, fight them. Suppose there's a war going on between US and Vietnam, and if the army general of USA, if he says that wherever you find the Vietnamese, you kill them, but naturally it's in context. But if I quote out of context and say that today the Army General of America says that wherever you find a Vietnamese today, you kill them, I will make him sound like a butcher. <laughs> but naturally, to boost up the morale, Almighty God will not say that, okay, run away. To boost up the morale, he has to say that don't get scared, fight. And it's a fight between truth and falsehood. And such examples you'll find in the Bible, if you see, in the Gospel of Matthew, you'll find in the Hindu scriptures, in Bhagavad Gita, full Bhagavad Gita speaks about that. That Lord Krishna, he is giving advice to Arjun. Arjun in the battlefield. He says in Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 1, verse number 46, 47, 48, in the battlefield, he puts his weapons and says, I would prefer being killed unarmed than to fight my relatives. So Shri Krishna says, just a few verses later, in Bhagavad Gita chapter number 2, verse number 2 and 3, that, oh, Arjun, how can you be so important? It is the duty of the Kshatriya. It is the duty of the warrior to fight. And only if you fight, will you go to the heavenly planet, to the paradise. And it goes on and on. You can see my cassette on terrorism and jihad, where I've spoken in detail. But when the Quran speaks about this, non-Muslims have a problem. Imagine if I say that Bhagavad Gita is saying, kill your relatives, it will be devilish. And Bhagavad Gita does say that. If I say Bhagavad Gita says, kill your relatives, it will be devilish. In context, it says that when you have to fight against untruth, if you have to fight against oppression, stand for truth, even if it be against your relatives. And as far as this message of Bhagavad Gita is concerned, we are for it. 
Quran says the same. Therefore, to make the non-Muslims understand Islam, according to me, the master key given in the Quran by our Creator Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, is Surah Al Imran, chapter three, verse sixty-four, which says, "Talo bila kalmitin sawa im bayna bayna kum." Come to common terms as between us and you. The best way to make the non-Muslims understand Islam and Quran is "Talo bila kalmitin sawa im bayna bayna kum." Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na abda illallah. That we worship none but one Almighty God, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And Arun Shuri, after quoting verse number five of Surah Toba, he jumps to verse number seven. You know why? Verse number six has the answer to his sickness. Verse number six of Surah Toba, chapter number nine, says that if any of the pagans, if any of the disbelievers, if any of your enemies seek asylum, if they want peace, grant it to them, so that they may hear the word of Almighty God and escort them to a place of security, because these are men who do not understand. The Quran does not say just let them go. Today. If the enemy wants peace, maximum the army general will say, "Okay, let them go." Quran does not say that. Quran says, "Escort them to a place of security," because these are men who do not understand. Just a few months back, when I was giving a similar example, there was a non-Muslim from the audience who said, "Brother Zakir." Even you are quoting out of context. You haven't quoted the full verse of Surah Tawbah, chapter nine, verse number five. That the full verse reads, after saying that in the battlefield, wherever you find the kafir, kill them and slay them. Wait for them in every strategy number four. It continues and says, but if they repent and if they establish prayers, regular prayers and regular charity, then let them go. For Allah is Forgiving and merciful. So he's telling, we come to know that only if they accept Islam, do you have to leave them. See, many a time it becomes difficult for us to give the full explanation. Other the lecture will be maybe ten hours long. As it is, people say that I'm a marathon speaker. But I thank that Hindu brother and said, Jazakallah for giving me an opportunity for clarifying more. Verse number five of Surah Tawba does refer that if The unbeliever, if he repents and establishes regular prayer and gives regular charity, indicating he becomes a Muslim, then let him go. If he becomes a Muslim, let him go. But verse number six says that if the unbeliever seeks asylum, wants peace, don't just let him go. Escort him to a place of security. If he becomes a Muslim, let him go. But if He does not become a Muslim and wants peace. Don't just leave him. Escort him to a place of security because maybe now he's in between. He's on the fence. Those who accept Islam find they're Muslims. He wants peace. Maybe the non-Muslims they may kill him. Maybe the non-Muslims would like to take revenge. Why is he wanting for peace? So Almighty God says in the Quran, "Don't leave them. Escort them to a place of security." So that is the reason critics like Arun Shuri they skip verses, they quote out of context, and you can give hundreds of such examples. If you go on the internet, it's very common, and we find now many of the non-Muslim they go on the internet, and to speak against the Quran has become easy. Therefore, more books are being published. Very easy, you know, internet. Is a boon and a bane. Initially, when it started, there were more websites against Islam than for Islam. Now Muslims have caught up. There are good sites also, but you don't have to be a scholar to find alleged mistakes in the Quran. And it's difficult to rip. 